In formal language theory, a grammar is a set of production rules for strings in a formal language. The rules describe how to form strings from the language's alphabet that are valid according to the language's syntax. A grammar does not describe the meaning of the strings or what can be done with them in whatever context a euro only their form. Formal language theory, the discipline which studies formal grammars and languages, is a branch of applied mathematics. Its applications are found in theoretical computer science, theoretical linguistics, formal semantics, mathematical logic, and other areas. A formal grammar is a set of rules for rewriting strings, along with a start symbol from which rewriting starts. Therefore, a grammar is usually thought of as a language generator. However, it can also sometimes be used as the basis for a recognizer a euro a function in computing that determines whether a given string belongs to the language or is grammatically incorrect. To describe such recognizers, formal language theory uses separate formalisms, known as automata theory. One of the interesting results of automata theory is that it is not possible to design a recognizer for certain formal languages. Parsing is the process of recognizing an utterance by breaking it down to a set of symbols and analyzing each one against the grammar of the language. Most languages have the meanings of their utterances structured according to their syntax a euro a practice known as compositional semantics. As a result, the first step to describing the meaning of an utterance in language is to break it down part by part and look at its analyzed form. Introductory example a grammar mainly consists of a set of rules for transforming strings. To generate a string in the language, one begins with a string consisting of only a single start symbol. The production rules are then applied in any order, until a string that contains neither the start symbol nor designated non-terminal symbols is produced. A production rule is applied to a string by replacing one occurrence of the production rule's left-hand side in the string by that production rule's right-hand side. The language formed by the grammar consists of all distinct strings that can be generated in this manner. Any particular sequence of production rules on the start symbol yields a distinct string in the language. If there are essentially different ways of generating the same single string, the grammar is said to be ambiguous. For example, assume the alphabet consists of A and B, the start symbol is S, and we have the following production rules, 1, 2. Then we start with S and can choose a rule to apply to it. If we choose rule 1, we obtain the string ASB. If we then choose rule 1 again, we replace S with ASB and obtain the string AASBB. If we now choose rule 2, we replace S with bar and obtain the string ARABORB, and are done. We can write this series of choices more briefly, using symbols. The language of the grammar is then the infinite set, where is repeated times. Formal definition equals the syntax of grammars equals, in the classic formalization of generative grammars first proposed by Noam Chomsky in the 1950s, a grammar G consists of the following components, a finite set N of non-terminal symbols, that is disjoint with the strings formed from G, a finite set of terminal symbols that is disjoint from N, a finite set P of production rules, each rule of the form. Where is the clean star operator and a node set union? That is, each production rule maps from one string of symbols to another, where the first string contains an arbitrary number of symbols provided at least one of them is a non-terminal. In the case that the second string consists solely of the empty string a euro that is, that it contains no symbols at all a euro it may be denoted with a special notation in order to avoid confusion. A distinguished symbol that is the start symbol, also called the sentence symbol. A grammar is formally defined as the tuple. Such a formal grammar is often called a rewriting system or a phrase structure grammar in the literature. Equals the semantics of grammars equals, the operation of a grammar can be defined in terms of relations on strings, given a grammar, the binary relation on strings in is defined by. The relation is defined as the reflexive transitive closure of, a sentential form is a member of that can be derived in a finite number of steps from the start symbol. That is, a sentential form is a member of. A sentential form that contains no non-terminal symbols is called a sentence. The language of, denoted as, is defined as all those sentences that can be derived in a finite number of steps from the start symbol. That is, the set. 
Note that the grammar is effectively the semi-few system, rewriting strings in exactly the same way. The only difference is in that we distinguish specific non-terminal symbols which must be rewritten in rewrite rules, and are only interested in rewritings from the designated start symbol to strings without non-terminal symbols. Equals example equals, for these examples, formal languages are specified using set builder notation. Consider the grammar where, is the start symbol, and consists of the following production rules, 1, 2, 3, 4. This grammar defines the language where denotes a string of n consecutive s. Thus, the language is the set of strings that consist of one or more s, followed by the same number of s, followed by the same number of s. Some examples of the derivation of strings in R. Note on notation, read string P generates string Q by means of production I, and the generated part is each time indicated in bold type. The Chomsky hierarchy. When Noam Chomsky first formalized generative grammars in 1956, he classified them into types now known as the Chomsky hierarchy. The difference between these types is that they have increasingly strict production rules and can express fewer formal languages. Two important types are context-free grammars and regular grammars. The languages that can be described with such a grammar are called context-free languages and regular languages, respectively. Although much less powerful than unrestricted grammars, which can in fact express any language that can be accepted by a Turing machine, these two restricted types of grammars are most often used because parses for them can be efficiently implemented. For example, all regular languages can be recognized by a finite state machine, and for useful subsets of context-free grammars there are well-known algorithms to generate efficient LL parses and LR parses to recognize the corresponding languages those grammars generate. Equals context-free grammars equals a context-free grammar is a grammar in which the left-hand side of each production rule consists of only a single non-terminal symbol. This restriction is non-trivial. Not all languages can be generated by context-free grammars. Those that can are called context-free languages. The language defined above is not a context-free language, and this can be strictly proven using the pumping lemma for context-free languages, but for example the language is context-free as it can be defined by the grammar with, the start symbol, and the following production rules, 1, 2. A context-free language can be recognized in time by an algorithm such as Early's algorithm. That is, for every context-free language, a machine can be built that takes a string as input and determines in time whether the string is a member of the language, where is the length of the string. Deterministic context-free languages is a subset of context-free languages that can be recognized in linear time. There exist various algorithms that target either this set of languages or some subset of it. Equals regular grammars equals, in regular grammars, the left-hand side is again only a single non-terminal symbol, but now the right-hand side is also restricted. The right side may be the empty string, or a single terminal symbol or a single terminal symbol followed by a non-terminal symbol, but nothing else. The language defined above is not regular, but the language is, as it can be defined by the grammar with, the start symbol, and the following production rules. All languages generated by a regular grammar can be recognized in linear time by a finite state machine. Although, in practice, regular grammars are commonly expressed using regular expressions, some forms of regular expression used in practice do not strictly generate the regular languages and do not show linear recognition or performance due to those deviations. Equals other forms of generative grammars equals, many extensions and variations on Chomsky's original hierarchy of formal grammars have been developed, both by linguists and by computer scientists, usually either in order to increase their expressive power or in order to make them easier to analyze or parse. Some forms of grammars developed include, tree-adjoining grammars increase the expressiveness of conventional generative grammars by allowing rewrite rules to operate on parse trees instead of just strings. Affix grammars and attribute grammars allow rewrite rules to be augmented with semantic attributes and operations, useful both for increasing grammar expressiveness and for constructing practical language translation tools. Equals recursive grammars equals. A recursive grammar is a grammar which contains production rules that are recursive. 
For example, a grammar for a context-free language is left recursive if there exists a non-terminal symbol A that can be put through the production rules to produce a string with A as the leftmost symbol. All types of grammars in the Chomsky hierarchy can be recursive. Analytic grammars, though there is a tremendous body of literature on parsing algorithms, most of these algorithms assume that the language to be parsed is initially described by means of a generative formal grammar, and that the goal is to transform this generative grammar into a working parser. Strictly speaking, a generative grammar does not in any way correspond to the algorithm used to parse a language and various algorithms have different restrictions on the form of production rules that are considered well formed. An alternative approach is to formalize the language in terms of an analytic grammar in the first place, which more directly corresponds to the structure and semantics of the parser for the language. Examples of analytic grammar formalisms include the following, the language machine directly implements unrestricted analytic grammars. Substitution rules are used to transform an input to produce outputs and behavior. The system can also produce the LM diagram which shows what happens when the rules of an unrestricted analytic grammar are being applied. Top-down parsing language, a highly minimalist analytic grammar formalism developed in the early 1970s to study the behavior of top-down parsers. Link grammars, a form of analytic grammar designed for linguistics, which derives syntactic structure by examining the positional relationships between pairs of words. Parsing expression grammars, a more recent generalization of TDPL designed around the practical expressiveness needs of programming language and compiler writers. See also References, Maduna, Alexander, Formal Languages and Computation, Models and Their Applications, CRC Press, pages 233. ISBN 9781466513457. For more on this subject, see Undecidable Problem. A. B. Chomsky, Noam. Three Models for the Description of Language. IRE Transactions on Information Theory 2, 113 a Euro 124-DOI, 10.1109-TIT. 1956.1056813. Archived from the original on October 18, 2013. Retrieved June 18, 2007. Chomsky, Noam. Syntactic Structures. The Hague, Mouton. Ginsberg, Seymour. Algebraic and Automata Theoretic Properties of Formal Languages. North Holland Pages 8 Euro 9. ISBN 0-7204-2506-9. Harrison, Michael A. Introduction to Formal Language Theory. Reading Massachusetts Addison Wesley Publishing Company. Pages 13. ISBN 0-201-02955-3. Sentential Forms, Context-Free Grammars, David Matusek, Grun, Dick and Jacobs, Serial H. Parsing Techniques A Euro A Practical Guide, Ellis Howard, England, 1990. Early, J. An Efficient Context-Free Parsing Algorithm, Communications of the ACM, Volume 13 No. 2, pages 94-102, February 1970. Newth, D. E. On the Translation of Languages from Left to Right. Information and Control 8, 607 A Euro 639 DOI. 10.1016 per second 0019-9958, 65, 90426 2. Retrieved May 29, 2011. Joshi, Aravain K., A.L., Triadjunct Grammars, Journal of Computer Systems Science, Volume 10 No. 1, pages 136-163, 1975. Costa, Cornelis H.A., Affix Grammars, in ALGOL 68 Implementation, North Holland Publishing Company, Amsterdam, pages 95 to 109, 1971. Newth, Donald E., Semantics of Context Free Languages, Mathematical Systems Theory, Volume 2, No. 2, pages 127 to 145, 1968. Newth, Donald E., Semantics of Context Free Languages, Mathematical Systems Theory, Volume 5 No. 1, p. 
pages 95 to 96, 1971. Notes on Formal Language Theory and Parsing, James Power, Department of Computer Science National University of Ireland, Maynard Maynard, Company. Kildare, Ireland JPR02, Berman, Alexander, The TMG Recognition Schema, Doctoral Thesis, Princeton University, Department of Electrical Engineering, February 1970. Sletter, Daniel D. and Templey, Davy, Parsing English with a Link Grammar, Technical Report CMUCS 91-196, Carnegie Mellon University Computer Science, 1991. Sletter, Daniel D. and Templey, Davy, Parsing English with a Link Grammar, Third International Workshop on Parsing Technologies, 1993. Ford, Brian, Packrat Parsing, A Practical Linear Time Algorithm with Backtracking, Master a Euro Unregistered Trademark S Thesis, Massachusetts Institute of Technology, September 2002. External links, Yearly Formal Grammar Conference.